little girl had the measles, and the little boy got the measles, and he got the flu or something along with it. And she said, he has he, he don't know anything for, that's what she said, he don't know anything for several days now, and I'm so afraid we have no Epsom salts for to move his bowels. Now, they're giving him Epsom salts, and we have no this and that for his eyes. They had no medicine whatsoever. Can you please come, doctor, with medicine? And I asked Earl if he went, and he said, just as soon as I could get there. As soon as I could get there. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, there are just so many, uh, so many things that I've heard, and we've got these letters. They're just really precious letters. Well, as I, as I said, it's going to take me, I, I, I'll try to get this other thing out of the way, and then I'm just going to give this my full attention. And I thought that perhaps, but I will be crossing on the phone to you, but there will come a time, and it'll probably be about 10 or 12 months from now, when I will have to just come down and just go over this. Was the, when did this happen? Who was this person? I don't have that. You know, there will just be a time we'll just have to spend an awful well, lot like of time. Well, like I told doing. Earl, the reason I did what I did, Helen, Helen Byrne told me, don't tell her I said this, I love <laughs> Helen, and yeah, I love she's Helen too. doing friends of ours, she comes to mm -hmm. visit us here. That's great, yeah, she's been and wonderful. She's been, uh, she and Earl have worked together, Earl has a high regard for her. She's I a, have a high regard for her. Everybody has a high regard for Helen Byrne. And so what was I going to tell you now? Oh. I said that, well, perhaps this will jog your memory, I said that I will, we'll just have to sit down and go over this, but uh -huh. what, I, what I want to do, oh, she told me, she says, Marge, what I have done has made it, I think, very easy for the University of Alaska, the way I could have had this, all this stuff already sent up there if I just piled everything in a box yeah. like I found it. Uh -huh. He had his files pretty much in order, but there's so many, 50 years, some of them have sure. been opened in 50 years, yeah. these boxes. So I decided that I wanted to, I, that was my contribution to the, to the university. I've worked a year and a half on it. One day I worked out there six hours in the garage getting stuff ready. Many days I worked four and five hours. I can believe I'm sure. And I didn't do it. I, I, you know, I just let everything go and made that my priority. So, for instance, there's a box about this big and about that wide. Everything in that box had saved the hospital in Palmer. Uh -huh. There wasn't a thing in there except it that. Was burned. When it burned I don't down. Know, I don't know. I don't know. Well. Colonel Olson wanted to close it because he wanted the patients to go to the power. Yeah, to Anchorage. Yeah. He wanted them to go to power, uh, to Anchorage. But, uh... That's 50 miles away. Sure. He got it to the Sure. You wanted to save some money, right? Yeah, Colonel, well, he, 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 did, he, he did like yes. the fact that the, uh, Dr. Robert had built up the hospital. Oh, I see. And from what I had read, you were the one who led the fight to save that hospital in Palmer. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. Look at me. And it was, it was, uh, I Olsen. may be the only one that has that. Olsen, I found that the other pennies for Palmer. That's Penny goes to Palmer. They got, the Presbyterians got, came through, somebody wrote to the Presbyterian Church. Did you write to them or somebody did? And wrote to the Presbyterian Church and told them that the hospital, they didn't have any money to offer you. They had had too money. And then, now, Sheldon Jackson was already dead, was he not? You, yeah. Sheldon, you never knew Sheldon Jackson. That, that little pamphlet got that many pennies for them, and then you had to match some more money, but didn't you get some from, from Washington, too? Yes, yes. And I've got all these dynamic letters that Earl wrote to Washington. What he year would this have been? Uh, 52. Isn't 52? that something? I'm going to have that uh, copied. Uh, Greening was still territorial governor, huh? Yeah, more, more like 50. At, at that point, it was going to be called the Valley Presbyterian Hospital yeah. because it was the Presbyterian who raised the money. Yeah. 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 Matching money. Matching money. Okay. And it was in the United States to raise the funds. Is that so? 
you, um, you, 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 that, that was a, a, a hard battle for you to, to save that hospital from what I've read. Mm -hmm. That this was a real, real fight for you to save it. How about the Raven missions? Did they help you at all on that Raven mission? Mm -hmm. Um, th this was to save the hospital that was at Palma. There was already a hospital at Palma. Yeah. There was no hospital there when you arrived. No, no. Uh, who built the hospital at Palma? Well, the Mass Hill River and Rehabilitation Corporation. Oh. Yeah, they're, they're the ones that ran the uh, agricultural colony. Yeah. This may be... Oh, uh-huh. And Colonel Olson was the head of that, too, right? Oh, yes. When Ergo, you know, after they did the reception for, for the uh, foundation, yeah. that next week, Palmer Hospital, the Valley Hospital, gave a big reception for Earl, open to the public to come and see him. I'm telling you, people came from miles. It was. I, I've, read, I've read stories about that where people say, I, I wanted to meet you because you delivered me. Yes, uh -huh. Yes. We've got, they did a, a video. We've got a video of that. Isn't that wonderful? Now, this right here, I think, is a very historical picture. This is now, this, this was in 1990. Am I 1991. 1991. Right after the other reception. Here. I see. Mm -hmm. Now, I think that's yeah. him standing there on the, this one right here. And when, when, when was, Okay, All right, you know? now this is uh, uh, when Earl went to, the, to Washington to give his address before the the, con the people there, this con congressional meeting. This is so funny here, I'd like to read you some of it. Uh, well, it's so interesting on down here. Uh, when Dr. Ulbricht, the Territorial Commissioner of Public Health, was in Washington on his last trip, he spent many mysterious hours visiting the officials in the United States Public Health Service and other ranking officials for the Federal Security Agency. These visits he described as largely educational. Ooh. This is Alaska, Alaska uh, I think it's the Times. Uh, I'll be Bob Atwood right <laughs> These visits he describes as, as he took off, as he took off on his return to Alaska, the Olbrick, Dr. Olbrick bore an appearance of having accomplished his mission. I think I have started something big, he said. I can't tell you about it now. Let's wait and see what happens. The story comes to light on the floor of Congress the other day when without debate, the House leadership pushed through a 700000 for an eight-month Alaskan health program. It has everything the Alaskan emissary had asked for. The million-dollar packet program appeared to be the starter of a real drive in Congress to meet the challenge of American Medical Association Commission uh, had sounded a report to the Secretary of the Interior after his inspection in the territory of the year. And then it goes and tells about all this other, and that says down here, accompanying Dr. Albrecht were the experienced campaigners and polit politics, politicos, it said, Delegate Bartlett and Governor Greeny. But, it said, that we did not have we did not get a chance to say anything, <laughs> say much. Barton described Dr. Albrecht's presentation as, as in a crusading spirit, and he reported that under the spell of the Alaskan doctor's arguments, the congressman's heart opened up like a blossom in spring. My, my! <laughs> and, and Mr. Keith, K-W-E-F-E, do you remember him? He yeah. was a, a hard-nosed yeah. man with tight fists, yeah. they say. And he was the one that Earl opened up to, and he gave him everything he wanted. Yeah. Okay. They were surprised about that. Uh, Congress, 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 Congress. Yeah, I'd like to hear the speech. You don't have a copy of the speech, do you? Yeah, I think I have. Oh, that would be great. And, uh, <laughs> Mr. O'Keefe said he would call prompt, uh, prompt hearings to record the convincing testimony. Yeah. 
Keith is the House Appropriation Committee Chairman of the Subcommittee of the SFA. And it, it just goes on and on and on. But I thought that was so cute. What You know, Senator Bart, it was a wonderful name. I guess he was. Oh, he, he spaced. He said, I just enjoyed him so much. And, and, and he just loved Earl. You, you'd be surprised at the letters yeah. that he wrote to Earl about everything. Yeah. Yeah. Advice and everything. <laughs> yeah. It's really something. Yeah. But I love that when he says he's opened up yeah. his heart like a blossom in spring. A blossom in spring. You see, they didn't have. A, they didn't even have a chance to say anything. He told it all, and he was even. Well, it sounds as though they didn't need to say That was Bob Atwood. He was the only one who knew metaphors in those days. <laughs> but another thing that was funny. This was in Anchorage. You went before the committees there. Who was that? Is that congressional too in Anchorage? I'm at Anchorage, no, do you know? And Earl, the, it got, he, he had a, he had something that he wanted to get from, some money for the health department or something like that. I've got, I've got it in there, but anyway, this is the gist of it, and I heard you and Bob Atwood laughing about it. Who was that man that got up and spoke last? He was getting toward five o'clock, and they started looking at their watches, and he was the last one on the agenda. He got up and said, well, it's about time to close the session, and I know Dr. Ulbrich, you know how convincing Dr. Ulbrich is. Let's just give him what he wants and not even hear his speech. We won't have to hear his speech. So they passed it without him even giving his speech. <laughs> they knew they would anyhow. <laughs> and he and Bob came to see Earl in 91 when we was up there. And he came and Bob, I'm so sorry I didn't have a recorder going. Yeah. yeah. And Bob sat in that chair and Earl sat in his chair and they talked for two hours and they laughed and they had so much fun together. Yeah. Yeah. Bob told yeah. some yeah. little jokes about Earl and, yeah. and uh, I wish I could. Well, it's, you know, it's clearly, you know, you have, you have an incredible story to tell. That's an incredible story to tell. In Australia one time on the beach in January and he was talking about going on the vacation the next year and I said, for heaven's sake. How can you, I, I wasn't used to planning. I was planning a little bit of time. And I found out he was planning for, he had a vision for 20 years in the future. Well, as I said uh, several times to him, uh, I, it, it is remarkable, I find it remarkable, that he was able to make yeah. this work. He had a convention. When he had, during the time of the Cold War, and he said at the, very, at the first meeting, one Russian came. One Russian came. Mm -hmm. The Mammoth, my goodness, yeah. Well, now look, this is cute too. This is from Bob Bartlett. World authority on virus disease. Oh, it's really, really. Says you believe, this is from Bob Bartlett. This is in 52. I believe that without too much difficulty, I could have a hearing set up for the mental health bill. You've heard about the mental health bill. Still a mess. Yeah. Uh, any time. I don't care to do so until you are in Washington because you would be the very best witness for the bill. <laughs> he was going to want it Earl to tell him when he could come to Washington yeah. we could set yeah. up the bill for him. Isn't that cute? Well, but the, the, uh, and also the, the fact of starting public health in Alaska, which had none, you know, just... just it was like, I, I, I would describe it as an unplowed field. You know, and of course this was happening at the time you know, when the natives who had not um, had white men's, you know, contact with white men before, now had a lot of contact. And and don't you think there wasn't some people there that, that tried to put blunders in his way, tried to keep him from getting appropriations for TB and stuff like that? And one of the doctors that was against him died of TB himself. Isn't that something? But now, how could I do this? This is the only copy that's probably in the world of this that I've yeah. got it. When you see that notebook, I said... Do you have a date of it? If you have a date, I have it on microfilm. We can uh, we can print it on microfilm. Well, I this back here... Oh, yes. Uh, April the 29th, 1949. I don't... That's uh, connected with this. I suppose it's part of it. But uh, you see... This is so fragile. It is. Yeah. And I'd like to have this, uh, I, I wonder how could we copy could this. You do, uh, do you have access to a Xerox machine? Yeah, but you know, I took, I took something, now they was 
scotch tape on that. It oh, won't pick doesn't. up on the no, scotch tape. it won't tape. pick up on scotch tape. Is there such a thing as having this typed on a piece of paper and putting this? Yeah. It could be, can be copied. Copied. It could be just copied. The other thing is, um, I can print it on the, um, from the microfilm. I have, uh, our library has back if, it, if indeed it is in there, but you don't even want to put this in the mail, do you? No. Well, if we'd lose this, it'd be gone forever. No, I wouldn't even remember what it, you know, I couldn't remember it. Then I, I really think the idea, the thing to do is, do you have a typewriter? Could you just sit down something? Well, and Linda, me? my daughter types. She comes over and types. Well, if, me, so. if Linda could just make I've it. I've got a new typewriter. I don't have to use it. I have, I've not had time to sit down. And you know, it's one of those new things. And Linda can just knock it out in a few minutes. She comes over. Well, that, that you probably ought to do with that. And if you there's had, probably several things that you should be doing that with. Well, I've got a lot of things tight like that. But this right here, I wondered if there's anything that could be done to take this darkness off. Now, I doubt it because you see now, the holes in so. it already. No. But, just, but it's readable the way it is. Oh, it's yeah. definitely readable. Yeah. But uh, if, if this were or typed or something and was attached, this could be put into a little thing so it wouldn't get, what do they do to preserve it? You can thing? laminate it. This should be laminated. It could be laminated. Oh, It'd be a, to get all this laminated, I don't know, you probably... Well, you, you might have to uh, cut it, you know, yeah. and, and uh, so that it would form, but you could take that to a, a any uh, print shop and they, they could laminate that for you. Yeah, because it's readable. You can see yeah. that. It's yeah. and, and you really should do that because it, it certainly will only get, you know, age. I don't know if more. anybody but me has that. And I'll tell you what, I just told your husband as we went down. I sent a, I, I had a notebook. It's this, this big. And everything important was put in there. I never, Earl put all kinds of things in there. You'd be surprised. And I got this out of there simply. I said, I've got to get this out of that notebook. I want this for my very own. So what I did, I took a thin knife, and I went under it there, and I got it all out without tearing it up. So that notebook is up there now. When you get back, you'll see that notebook. Right. And there's so many things just right. like over here. I've got a bunch of stuff over here. You won't believe what I've got. I've got all these little books here, which I've sent. I sent so many of them to a line. Uh, it's, it's actually what happened. Annual report, the Alaska Visitors Association. But this is all about health. That's good. But that's really where it should be. It really should be. It should be there. It, well, I sent a box for that's this. Good. Stuff, that's wonderful. And I, I was reading through here that then I picked up on something, a story that I told you about. It was in here. Uh-huh. So I don't know. I guess maybe I'm not going to be writing anything, you know. So I just thought that I've got to get this and send it here. Well, that, that's, it, it really should be in the archives up, up there, I, I well, would think. Here, it's, was, this was <laughs> about the earthquake, of course, that's not so old. But a lot of this letter, was, Earl had this, and I'm sure your secretary must have done You wouldn't have had time to do all that. Didn't your secretary do that for you? Look, this is about the uh, alert Alaska earthquake in you. Yeah, right. before, yeah. yeah. But this is what I found inside of it. Now this is uh, November 23rd, 1953. A special course develops nurses from India, Eskimos, and Aleuts. Now I, I sort of cut it off where it wasn't even about the nurse. But now that's a whole lot of information about mm -hmm. somebody mm -hmm. studying. Beds open 175 mm -hmm. initial. And then mm -hmm. uh, I don't even know where they've got anything like that. They said they didn't have anything. That's what they told me to. And this one here is still about, see, this is all about the hospital, big washing, even if, uh, every day at the hospital, so how they did the laundry. And here's something very important. No, that's Mount not. Mount Edgecombe. Mm -hmm. I'll tell you, there, there's a lot of, uh, there was a lot of bitterness about uh, Morningside. Have you heard about Morningside, the story of Morningside? Uh, Where was Morningside, honey? Portland. Portland. You see, Alaska used to treat, people were treated that had mental diseases like they used to beat them and they'd put them in jail. And so they'd send them out to Portland and yeah. these two guys out there running that hospital mm -hmm. and then they wanted to open up some, or I wanted to open up some in Alaska. And that really, that was a political thing that started. And Dr. Philip Moore, you've heard that name, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Earl hired him. 
and uh, he was a, a wonderful, but he started the first bone bank in Sitka. There ought to be some things written about Philip Moore, mm -hmm. but uh, I've got wonderful pictures of him and all. But no, this is, you know, this is great. Here they had a school of practical nursing down there. It's oh, they had it investigated and everything, and, and, and Dr. Moore was going to resign. He couldn't take it, and Earl talked him out of it. Well, when did you become, what year did you become commissioner? Mm -hmm. Forty-five. See, this is. Uh, and and you were there until what? Till fifty-five. Fifty-six. Fifty-six. Three hundred beds for treatment of number one scourge. So you started this at Mount Edgecombe. Mm -hmm. Earl has started a lot of things, but it's not noted that he did because uh, he didn't didn't blow his own horn. And I was I've got something in there that they gave him uh these these are wonderful clips, Marjorie. They are really wonderful clips. Well I I thought and here is about the three hundred bed hospital and I'll tell you, he had to suffer a lot he suffered a lot for some of the things he did and you'll come across that too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But he he came out smelling like a rose. Well any time you uh, are in the public eye well, that's what or, Helen told me, Helen Byrne. Any time you are in the public eye, no, no matter what, if you're an entertainer or well, she told me, you she so said I, I talked to her about this on the on the phone the other day when she called me. She says, Marge, you got, I said, should we print this? She says, you have to print that because it's, it shows what kind of a man he was to yeah. stand up to it. It's also a matter of public record. And he, he, she also said, just last week when I, I was giving a speech or somewhere, a man stood up and said, that's a, a bald-faced lie. It's not true at all. He, he called her right to her face. Oh, yeah. She, she's in a very sensitive job. She, she, has, a, she has a difficult job. Yeah. yeah, I think she's going to retire. She is. She is. She's I will. Uh, she's, she's retiring, you know, in June. Is she a state uh, appointed? Do you know what date in June she's going to retire? Yes. Sorry, what? Do you know what date she's going to retire in June? No, I just no. I don't think she told uh, me, but I can. I'm the, sure she uh, will. the present mayor is is um, leaving office this year because the thing can't be reelected. He's served his two terms. Mm -hmm. And apparently, um, the new mayor may want to bring in his own person. Well, I know. I think she's at the age where she just wants. Now, to. Earl, let me. I, I want to tell you what I told. I want Earl to hear this and see if I'm right. In Earl's, in his lifetime, you know, in his work, he served under seven governors, both Democrat and Republic. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but the county of Alaska, Ohio, and Pennsylvania. Alaska, Ohio, uh, Pennsylvania. Okay, in Alaska, you had uh, you had what? Greening, Heitzelman, Heitzelman. Oh, Heitzelman before Greening. Yeah. No, it was Troy. It was Heitzelman Troy? Wasn't it? There were some names that I've heard that I didn't uh, recognize. Troy, Greening. Troy Greening. And Heisman. And then Ernest Green. And Lashi and O'Neill. Lashi and O'Neill. And in Pennsylvania it was Leader and Lawrence. Ray, Leader and Lawrence. And another one, the last one that was there, Doc, the one that buddy bumped his nose after you tried to get, what was his name, Dr. Uh, I mean, um, Shaft? No. You remember you tried to get, Earl tried to get a law passed in Pennsylvania to put a marker on the door so you wouldn't run into it? Uh-huh. Well, they, they didn't do it. And it wasn't long after they sort of turned that down that uh, uh, Dr., uh, I mean, uh, Governor, what was his name? The last governor. Ran into a glass door and broke his nose. And you don't then mean that Casey? Yeah, Casey. Oh, no, no, no. Well, the, the last no, governor, okay. She, she missed the last governor. It was, okay, it was Dave Lawrence. Uh, leader. leader, and then I believe Shap. No, his name was an, it, was, was it a Scott? Oh, what well, was? How about Scrant? 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 Scrant was who it was. And yeah. when he it came a big paper with in his paper, his nose all bounded up. He broke his nose actually by running into a door, and right after that, he yeah, he passed that law. Earl got a lot of laws passed in Pennsylvania. We'd like to hear all of them. 
But you didn't want? have to uh, fight. You didn't have to fight like you did in Alaska for everything. Okay. And I told them too when I was over there. He said a lot of politics. I said, "There's there's two things that Earl told me that he wants to, to be put into this book. It's in a letter that I've got. All right. One of them is in the beginning of the book somehow." The reason I'm talking is I know it's difficult for him, and yes. I know you want to hear this. Yes. He has always said, in all of his work, and especially in his Alaska work, he does not take any credit for himself, for anything that was accomplished, because he was only an instrument in God's hands. It was God doing the work, and he was using him as an instrument. Now, don't cry, darling. Mm -hmm. Look at his little face. He's terrible. Yeah. <laughs> but that's that, wonderful. But that's what he wants that implied. Is that true now, what you wanted? And I told him he should have written that up and he could just handed it to you, but mm -hmm. he'll write something like that. All right. And he wants that implied in the first of the book. <coughs> he could say this in a, in a preface. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And there was something else that you wanted to put into the book. Now, what were the other two? I got into that. Now, there was another thing that you wanted. I understand. Helen told me that there are several chapter headings, chapter titles that you would like to use. Helen said that you had several chapter chapter titles that you would like to use. Well, I found something. We have got all the memories of them. Have you? Well, I found some writings in his the other day of names of chapters. Now, I don't know where I found that. But I'll tell you something funny. What I, I thought he was going to write the book, you know. So I mm -hmm. said, well, I've got, a, I've got a chapter named for one of your chapters. And he said, well, what is it? I said, the Midnight Train to Palmer. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty good. <laughs> that sounds like a, yeah, a wild western. Uh, mid but that's what happened, the Midnight Train to Palmer. Yeah. But that well, was just um, funny. I'm there, uh, there's no reason why there can't be as much in here, you know, of, uh, of writings that he has all things that he has already written that can be used in here. They certainly ought to be used, and um, he would certainly be welcome. They ought to be open to write a preface or contribute to a preface. Um, and it might be best. When Is that a little book following this? One? No, no, it's an no. introduction. Oh, music. just introduction. That's right. Introduction. That's your introduction. And it might be best uh, when he says that he wants to take notes. It might be best for him to say that and to put it uh, in that way rather than to have someone else say it. Yes. Uh -huh. It would be best if he said that this is because and express his his feelings uh, that way. And that I would think that'd be very appropriate. Because he told me that he never operated on a patient without going to God in prayer yeah. before that asking yeah. him to be his hand yeah. when he when he operated you know he never the only person to die that he operated on was that Indian woman and she was already and on her last leg he didn't thing. have a chance for that he didn't and one of the stories oh I could just so many goes on and on wait do, do you have a tape recorder yeah, yeah. I'm sure. I'm not sure how to use it. We no. just bought some tapes for. All right. It. Well, uh, but my, well, but it might be easier, you know, for you. For you but see, I'm that. telling you a story. Now. I don't know if, if I could bring all this out in my own mind. Yeah. I somebody, see. you know, I like, see. without somebody here to coach you. Well, yes. I don't know. We might. Now, one of the things that was great too, when Earl celebrated his 80th birthday, uh -huh. uh, Margaret Hines and I gave him a sit-down dinner for over a hundred people at the El Elmendorf Air Force Club. Oh my goodness. And boy, everybody was there. Evangeline was on a trip and she came, a uh, uh, tour, a uh, cruise. I understand she came home two days er or a day early to come to that. Evangeline would do that. She would do that for him. And, but that, not only what happened then, there's several things. Palmer was celebrating their 50th anniversary. When, when, now, when would this have been? What year would this have been? Well, your 80th birthday, your, when was that now? I don't remember what year. Well, he was born in 1905, so it has to be... 1935. No, not 35, no. honey. What hour? 80, 80, it was 1985. 1985, yeah, yeah that's yeah. it. So he had his birthday, his, uh, his 50th, Earl's 50th year to go into Palmer, uh -huh. the 50th years of the colony came on the same time and his 85th birthday. 80th birthday. 80th birthday, yeah. that's right. Uh -huh. 80th birthday. And so uh, uh, we went out to Palmer. And of course they had 
lot of things for Dr. Albrecht up there. I, we, I was totally wiped out emotionally, and he was too. The people they had coming in there had him come in and sit, and the people shook hands with him and made pictures there again with the children and everything. And here a man came walking across the uh, fairgrounds there, this great big tall strong, uh, strong man with a scar across his forehead right here. And he went up to Earl and just picked him up. Earl looked so little standing there. He just picked him up and they both stood there and cried. That was the boy that he had operated on when he was five, four years old or five. Was it four or five years? Four or five years old. Uh, uh, this young man, this young child, was brought to Earl at the hospital. A horse had kicked him in the head and his eye was laying down here on his face and his brain was out on his forehead. Now, he didn't plan to be a brain surgeon. <laughs> Earl did, but he had to take care of him. He's the only one there. So he got this young kid in, and he cleaned up his wound. Of course, he had to lose the eye because there's no way you could put that eye back in there. And so he cleaned up all... You, you call these meninges? What do you call it? Meninges? He cleaned up the meninges here, and it had grip, grat, stuff in it, and put it back in his head and stitched it up. And there was no antibiotics. It was before antibiotics, so he didn't know what he was going to do with his child. So he remembered back in, in surgery and all, back at Jefferson, that there was a, a medicine that they gave for kidney infection. You remember the name of the medicine? But you remember, there's a medicine they gave for kidney infection, and by cracky, he had some of it there. So he gave this to that boy, and he lived. He didn't get an infection or anything in there. Mm. Well, the, the Moravians were noted for um, using all kinds of herbs, weren't they? Did the Moravians have, weren't they very skilled in using herbs? Do you know any of that? Did you ever use any of that? No. No. Is that but, a lost, is that a lost art? Yeah, we I still have an herb garden in Bethany. We, we but you know, that's not here. the end of the story. <laughs> oh, we've right. got the story here. It's written yeah. up when uh, it's written up in the paper about that. And he said to Earl in the paper, I mean, he said to Earl, here he was, the man with grandchildren. He might have died. He would have died if it hadn't been somebody else. Sure. So uh, he said, you know, I don't remember anything about the operation. Do you know what I remember, Doctor, about you? That you brought me a Popeye doll to the hospital, brought, you know, you remember the Popeye doll, right, too? Yeah. and said, you brought me a Popeye doll, and I played with that, that was the most wonderful thing that I had, and he said, I kept it for so many years, and then, then it disappeared, and he said, I worried and worried about trying to find that doll, I could never find that doll, but said, that's the thing I remember about you and the operation was the Popeye doll that you gave me, now I've got that written up in a big, I've probably got duplicates of that. Mm -hmm. That'd be great. I've got duplicates of things I can do. That, that yeah. would be great. Anything that you feel is too precious yeah. to send, uh, I would just, just try to, uh, if, if you can't, uh, run it through a zero. And then uh, it, this was the type We were there all day, and I'm telling you, the people couldn't get, get mm -hmm. around him like his grand, uh, yeah. Grandpa Santa Claus. Yeah. This beautiful girl came up, and she just hugged him. She says, you don't know who I am, but you saved my life. And Earl says, well, tell me about it. He said, my brother and I had, uh, my brother was very sick, said, my brother died, but you got to come to see me, and you saved me, I would have died too. They had meningitis. Oh and the doctor, was, some doctor, there must have been somebody there, who was it, treated her for something else, treated oh. the boy for something else, and the boy I died. I didn't treat anyone for meningitis in those days. That was, yeah. And she said that... Uh, you treated me for meningitis, and I got better, and I lived. And my family says I owe my life to you. Wasn't well, that it wonderful? Was true. Yes, yes. And it was so emotional. I wasn't. Even, they were getting his autographs, and they were asking me for mine. And I said, Well, what do you want mine for? They said, Well, you're part of all this. Uh -huh. <laughs> it wasn't even. That. It wasn't even. Hadn't even I said there. I wasn't even here then. Right. That's all right. Just put your. So I had to sign, and he had to sign. And I'm telling you, seeing all these people, some of them are crying. Sure. I've never seen anybody yeah. love a doctor that much. It's, well, it's, it's, it's amazing. It's just, yeah. I was totally wiped out, and so was he. Well, those people were very far from home. 
Yeah. And and must have wondered where they were and had no doctor, you know. Mm -hmm. And it was, um, and they, they, those people were very important to uh, Alaska. Were they? They, 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 they brought some stability with them, but they weren't the. He treated to see by his minister's background. He treated the total person, and yeah. people had problems up there. Men and women oh, weren't yeah. getting along too good, and they were coming to him for counseling. I see. He can't write too much about that, but he can yeah. say that he counseled some of them. Yeah. yeah. But um, and another phase of this little doctor sitting over here was he sang in the Bach choir for four years, and he played oh. the trombone. Really? The back choir? In Bethlehem? Yeah. yeah sir. You ever know a Moravian that couldn't do something like that? What, 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 Wally, you, under you, Wally. Baritone? What? Are you a baritone? Yeah. Baritone. Mm -hmm. Who's the leader? Wally? Yeah, no. Uh, Thor Johnson. Thor Johnson. I for Johnson. I for Jones. I for Jones. I for Jones. Yeah. But. Uh, and so there was no, what were they going to do in the valley there? They were just there with their tents, and then when they built their house, there's no movie. Records, and he'd have concerts in his home. He'd send out invitations for people that liked the high class music, and they'd come to his house and listen to concerts. Did you know Lorene Harrison? You bet. I'll have to show you something if I can find you real quick. Well, you see him as a burlesque woman. He got on the stage and, and gave.